morning, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday morning vlog. Good morning. We are so glad to be back with you. That's right. And not only back with you, we're going back down to the Strip. We sure are. There's a lot of changes happening in 2023, or actually, I should say, they happened last month. <laughs> they sure did. And we're going to check out two of them. First of all, we're going to say goodbye to the Mirage, although it's not going to be left uh, gone yet because it's going to be around for 2023, right? Yeah, it's going to take a while for the new owners to come up with their new designs. We'll talk about that in the vlog. And then we're going to say hello to the Horseshoe. We sure are. All right, get ready because this adventure starts right now. Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to a couple of rare, cloudy, and overcast weeks here in the Las Vegas Valley. <laughs> to be honest with you, we don't really mind it. It actually gives the place a little atmosphere. Today, we are here to say farewell to the Mirage. Steve Wynn's brilliant concept, the Strip's first mega resort that opened its doors to instant success in 1989. As of December 19, 2022, the Mirage property has been sold to Seminole Hard Rock Entertainment out of Florida for a cool $1.1 billion. The Hard Rock folks gave huge kudos to MGM for the excellent condition of the buildings, <laughs> but yeah, they're going to gut the place inside and out with plans to be revealed later this year. So let's just appreciate the Mirage as we know it one more time. Now here's a fun fact. The actual building was placed back away from the street on purpose at the suggestion of Steve Wynn's then wife Elaine. She said people would appreciate the architecture with a little bit of distance and some perspective. <laughs> and guess what? She was right. Of all the changes to be made, the loss of this may be one of the things that tugs on our heartstrings the most. The beloved Mirage Volcano has been among the very top free attractions in Las Vegas for decades, and it's a spectacle. We were actually lucky enough to capture the whole show on video one summer evening. We'll post a separate vlog on our channel of the entire performance beginning to end. is going to reimagine this area with a guitar-shaped all-suite hotel tower maybe 700 feet tall with an infinity pool on the rooftop. <laughs> you could say that is going to be a spectacle in its own right. Just north of the Mirage Lake is Siegfried and Roy Plaza, an homage to these two superstar magicians and showmen. They were pioneers in both family entertainment and animal conservation, and they performed, get this, a whopping 5,750 shows right here at the Mirage. Before we go in, just a nod to one of the coolest transportation gimmicks on the Strip, this tram that takes you between Mirage and TI. It's too early today for it to be operating, but we did capture it arriving in our 2019 resort tour. No sooner do you enter the Mirage lobby than you encounter the Hard Rock brand. Although the name and the staff will remain the same for now, the player's loyalty program will switch over from MGM to Hard Rock's Unity card. There is lots of signage about that, but otherwise, you don't see much of the Hard Rock name, at least yet. When you think of the Mirage, isn't this iconic aquarium one of the first things that comes to mind? It's a 20,000-gallon saltwater tank placed just behind the front desk and meant to distract and relax you as you wait to check in. There are about 450 fish in the tank of 85 different species, and it requires a full-time staff to take care of it. The other thing we are going to miss are these lovely mermaids just inside the main doors. <laughs> Who has not rubbed their fins for good luck? I'll tell you what I have every time I walk in that door. When you check into the Mirage, you have a very long walk to the guest elevators, and guess what? That was by design. 
Steve Wynn wanted the guests to have to walk to the casino unobstructed by columns or anything else that would get in the way of a sweeping view of the gaming area, and so that's how it is. The Hard Rock folks are going to double the size of this casino and the theater, add 600 rooms, and expand the convention space. On the day it opened in 1989, the Mirage unveiled the nine-story glass-domed atrium, the likes of which had never been seen in Las Vegas before. It was lush, tropical, Polynesian, a far cry from the desert themes of the dunes, Sahara, Sands, and Aladdin. We have both always loved being in this atrium any time of the year, and it was sort of a precursor to the Bellagio Conservatory. Here's a fun fact. The Mirage employs a staff of 60 gardeners to take care of the atrium, plus 10 acres of landscaping outside. Since 2006, now wow, think about that. That's 17 years ago. The Beatles' Love has been one of the most successful Cirque du Soleil shows on the Strip. And it will continue to be because Hard Rock has just extended their contract. This is the largest of the Cirque showrooms with 2,000 seats and 6,000 speakers. The branding, the photo ops, the Beatles-themed goodies for sale in the shop, it can't help but put a big smile on your face by just being here. <laughs> and you know what? All you need is love. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> the Mirage Backyard has always been a mecca for desert dwellers like us. On this winter morning, the pool area is cordoned off, but its tropical vibe has always been a tourist favorite. This area will soon be getting a complete makeover. Sadly, the permanent closure of Siegfried and Roy's Secret Garden was announced by the new owners back in November, but we toured the 10-acre Secret Garden during our Mirage Resort tour in the summer of 2019, and like the volcano, we are really glad to have captured it on video. The dolphins were a delight and a huge crowd favorite. The animal habitat has a cool green jungle vibe and the jungle animals are magnificent. At the time, we shared our thoughts on camera, but I don't think this clip ever made it into the final vlog. All right, let's have a little chat about this. I, I gotta admit, uh, it, it, we both got kind of teary-eyed, didn't we? Yeah, I got choked up. I had a moment with that Siberian tiger up on the limb. I don't know. They're magnificent beasts. They truly are. Beautiful. It just doesn't seem right. I mean, I know yeah. they're, they're well taken care of here, but it really just sort of breaks your heart a little bit. A little and bit. I yeah. hate to say that. I don't know if I'll put this in the vlog. If I do, uh, you're just reporting how I, you feel. I'm just, you know, saying how I feel. It has nothing to do against the Mirage because they're doing a great job here. And yeah. So is the Siegfried and Roy uh, Habitat. They were performing animals. I mean, they were in the show. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, so. That's right. You're right. As part of the sale, Hard Rock and MGM will partner 50 50 on finding new homes for all these animals, a natural environment where they can live out their lives. Let me tell you something Siegfried and Roy would be pleased. The sun may be setting on the Mirage, but half a mile down the Strip and just four days earlier, the sun rose on the Horseshoe. On December 15th, Bally's became the Horseshoe Las Vegas. Doesn't it feel like we've been looking at this marquee under construction for months? I'm hoping that one of these days it's going to tell us that this is the Horseshoe. Okay, now this is hard to miss. It is right out at the corner of Flamingo and Las Vegas Boulevard up next to the escalators and it is huge. This is the beginnings of Blake Sheldon's Old Red, a $30 million project that is going to bring country music front and center on the strip. Old Red will be a four-story theater and restaurant with almost 700 seats and a rooftop patio and it's due to open this year. Stay tuned, we will definitely be back for this one. Despite all the confusing signage, Bally's is now officially the horseshoe, but the Grand Bazaar shops remain. 
It's estimated that 100,000 people pass by this little plot of land every day, and that's a whole lot of shoppers, diners, and drinkers. We were last year in September checking out the construction. Let's go see it now that it's all finished. With the official renaming last month, this became Caesar's 10th horseshoe branded property with others scattered across the country. The casino has been redone with a new layout and finishes, so let's go check it out. Early press on the refurbishment promised a more spacious casino floor, and they sure did that. The casino is just over 68,000 square feet, and with these wide aisles, it's a pleasure to walk through. The new paint palette is earth tones, and can we just talk about this carpet for a minute? <laughs> it's horseshoes. Lots and lots of horseshoes. And speaking of earth tones, a very friendly security guard told us that the exterior of the building is going to get a makeover soon as well. Matter of fact, the website already shows it with the brown accents. We saw the Indigo Lounge when we visited a few months ago, and now that all the construction curtains are down, we just love the location of this bar. Back here is access to the lower level attractions, we'll go there shortly, and lots of colorful slots. Another important update was the relocation of the sportsbook counter up to the casino level, just as you step into the walkway to Paris. Now this looks like an interesting combination, pixels and pints. When we were here in September, the area adjacent to the food court, which used to house the Bally Sportsbook, was in the midst of a transformation. That's all done as well, now it's the arcade. The arcade is a 7,000 square foot gamer's paradise, featuring 80 games in what the website calls an urban neon playground. We could only peek inside, but it looks like a blast, and out front is a big roomy bar. <laughs> Definitely an interesting combination. A huge driver for the rebranding was the World Series of Poker. The World Series of Poker Hall of Fame Poker Room, now <laughs> that's a mouthful, has been updated by Caesars to a total of 18 tables. The World Series of Poker was held here and at the Paris on the Las Vegas Strip for the first time last year and will be again in 2023. Now there are a couple things we saw in September that we didn't see today. First of all, the display of the million dollars. That was near Jack Binion Steakhouse and it's been put away for now but will be back later on. And although the showroom still features extravaganza, the Jubilee Showgirls have left the building. All right, who's keeping score? Binion's became the horseshoe, became Binion's, but then the Bally's became the horseshoe, but then Tropicana became Bally's, but then what the heck? I'm like, getting dizzy. I am too. <laughs> and and then when you look at Bally's, it got Bally and horseshoe both on the exterior. Well, of the actually, out the on the outside, there is no distinction. We don't know what that building is. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> crazy, and it makes me laugh, especially when we start looking at the footage and we're just going plus. In the past, that used to be the MGM Grand. Yeah, I'll tell you what. And <laughs> when I lived here, that was a great place to go. It was the one of the biggest casinos in the world. And you parked out front. You just walked in the front door. Everything was real nice and cozy. I loved it back then. Plus, they had these busts of the people, the entertainers and things like hey, that. Well, it was MGM. Yeah, it was yeah. really cool. And then, of course, uh, the, the horrible fire. I actually worked with a, a girl whose uh, parents uh, were actually in that fire. And, and, boy, that was just a disaster. They were in the building in 19. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they survived. Yeah. So that that place has got so much history. And then you got the Mirage, which is just the Mirage. And it is going to stay the Mirage, as we said in the intro, at least through this year. We'll be interested to see those couple of renderings get fleshed out a little bit more. But when Hard Rock talks about gutting the place, 
Yeah, <laughs> makes your heart <laughs> makes your heart stop a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it does. But it's also also it's kind of exciting too because you know it's a new upgrade and stuff like that. I I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. This is just what Las Vegas has done ever since I've been here. It is. And 1989 was a very long time ago, so they're going to completely reimagine the exterior, including right. the pools. And I'm sure it's going to be spectacular when it's all done. And I don't care what you say. That guitar out on the strip, I don't know. It's going to be a showstopper. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know what it's going to look like there on the strip. I just, my, my we might mind, have to book a room. My mind just, yeah, I, uh, I just can't. <laughs> Compro uh, compromise it in my mind right now, you know? We are going to love watching Comprehend that. Comprehend it in my mind is what I meant to say. We got gotcha. you. I'm not old, right? <laughs> what year are we in? 2023? It is 2023. Oh, and how old am I still? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else you want to tell these nice people in 2023, Miss Paul? Hey, I want to tease next week. You know, we talked about that half mile between Mirage and the Horseshoe. Let's take a look at that. That is some budget-friendly property, and we're going to tour it next week. All right. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, bye, everybody.